Okay, so it's 6.02, so we should, I'll, we'll just get started here tonight. Hello, my name is Grace Kim, for those of you that have not um, had the introduction to meet me yet. Um, I am the Equine and Companion Animal Extension Assistant um, here for Nebraska. Tonight's webinar will be over equine first aid kits, what to put in them, some tips, um, some examples. If you guys have any questions, our participants tonight, you are welcome to type in the chat box or at the end, you are welcome to unmute yourself and ask some questions. For those of you that have, are not able to get on tonight, this recording will also be on our um, YouTube page, equine webinar series, if you guys want to look back on this webinar or um, watch it for the first time. So I wanted to start off with why have a first aid kit in the first place? Um, well, for one, you would want to be prepared in an emergency. And this first aid kit, I was implying that it was an equine first aid kit, but your equine first aid kit can also include a first aid kit for humans, so yourself and any sort of injury, um, for you, your horse, and others. And then horses, if you are an equine person, horses are injury addicts. They always tend to get hurt somewhere scratch somewhere or be lame at some point in their lives. Um, so it's always good to have a first aid kit available in those situations. Uh, so what the different types for a first aid kits I would like to talk about, which, which would be a saddlebag or trail ride first aid kit. Um, as you can see here on the right, this is an example of, possible, of a possible trail ride first aid kit that you can buy or what we can consider a truck slash trailer first aid kit for when you are traveling long distances, short distances, um, in any sort of capacity. And then lastly, the stable or barn first aid kit. Um, the picture below, this could be a, an example of the truck or trailer first aid kit or the stable first aid kit. It's a very good example. I took a pic, I took this picture at my own barn from one of um, the borders there and she had it very well organized. So you'll see more pictures of this uh, first aid kit in the later slides. So I want to start off with a small one, but before I move on, um, first aid kits are always necessary, especially in emergencies, but always convert, converse with your veterinarian, especially in those larger injuries or more extreme injuries. Um, having all these available band-aids, gauze, and ointments are going to come really are going to come in handy especially after conversing with your veterinarian if they are not able to come to your location um, right away. So this is a first example the saddlebag or trail ride first aid kit. Um, you want this first aid kit to be small because you have to think about um, the size of your bag, the weight, especially on trail rides. Um, so stick with the basics. Um, emergency numbers, so if you are riding with other people or if someone that someone finds you and on the side of the road or in a trail that you're on, they have these emergency numbers that they can contact in an emergency. Um, other things for just the essentials would be band-aids for yourself gauze, vet wrap, sunblock, depending on the type of, on the day that you go, a hoof pick, especially for horses, they tend to get stuff stuck in their hooves, which could actually get them, make them become lame, and if you can get that out, um, that'll be super helpful. Um, acetaminophen, so any, any ibuprofen or stuff like that for any pain, scissors, and of course a cell phone if possible, in the previous picture, I posted a picture that is specifically, it's a trail ride bag that's specifically for um, a first aid kit, but if you don't wanna spend the money or you don't have the access to go buy one of those, you are all, always welcome to use a fanny pack that you can, or a small bag that you could hang from your saddle. So those would also work well as one that you would buy online too. The big thing about a trail ride or first aid kit is just to bring the essentials, 
and to be prepared in, especially with emergency numbers. Next would be a truck and trailer first aid kit. This obviously can be larger depending on how much space you have in your storage area of your trailer. But some things to think about when you pack it would be tools, um, stethoscope, thermometers, depending on when this injury or this event happens that you would need any of this, a flashlight or even a headlight or a headlamp would come in handy, especially if it's at night. And then a knife and or scissors to cut horses out of any dangerous situations or your knife could also come in handy for there. Um, additional things to add to your kit would be cleaning supplies, a lot of padding, uh, vet wrap. Vet wrap is a universal um, use for all things for equines. Um, topical antibiotics or non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. So Butte would be a great example if your horse is really hurting from an injury and you can't even get near it, giving the horse some Butte before. Obviously talking to your vet to make sure that these would be the right steps um, would be great. Um, some examples for your truck and trailer first aid kit, you could always use a Rubbermaid tub, but I know some people use inside the Rubbermaid tub to organize it even more, you can actually use um, those fishing fishing um, containers that have little compartments inside of them. So then you can have ev everything really well organized in the kit. And then the third one would be your stable or barn first aid kit. So this will depend on the number of horses you have at your barn. So um, you would want to have, you know, double the amount if you have two. Um, if you only have one, you can have, you know, enough that you would need to take care of yourself in a situation. Um, include everything that we I've talked about from the saddlebag and trailer kits, but then you can also duplicate that because you are always welcome to come back to your first aid kit um, if you use it and then you can have more because it's not like it's gonna really go anywhere unless this injury or event happens at your barn. Something to really think about would be the different sizes and types of bandages that you can fit into your first aid kit no matter how big you make it. Um, this will help for all the different injury sizes, wound sizes that you might end up with with your horse. Um, wound cleaner or saline, um, would also be a nice thing that you could add to your stable or barn kit. I would actually recommend this for your trailer first aid kit, to be honest, because um, you would, you normally people don't have access to water, so you could cold hose the injury or clean out whatever dirt and bacteria is laying in that injury, so having access to that. Additional medication, just like Butte or um, any other maybe ulcer guard or any other things that you feel would be that your horse would be prone to. Um, and then also first aid for you. So band-aids, neosporin, even those miniature first aid kits for um, people, you can add that in there. Then this next slide has a great example of different things that this woman has put into her first aid kit. So don't forget about gloves. These are gauze, duct tape. Duct tape especially comes in handy when you have foot abscesses that you need to wrap horses' feet and soak them um, for abscesses. And that duct tape is an overall handy tool. And then over here, you can see that this person also put some human first aid stuff in hers. So, uh, I know in here it's Neosporin, some sanitizer. They even have these um, ACE bandages, so um, ice pack or cold press if you fall off your horse and you need it. And then they have their own miniature first aid kit. And then over here, they actually, I thought was super smart, especially for betadine or people known as iodine or witch hazel or hydrogen peroxide, you don't want that leaking in your tub, especially if it's in there for a while. So they actually put it into this Ziploc baggie to keep it from actually getting onto anything else inside the first aid kit. 
Um, and then one thing I did want to talk about would be your first aid kit, you hopefully don't need to use it a lot or a lot of it. But if you do, if you don't, you also need to keep track of this is what we consider vet wrap. These are two very good examples on the right would be a very not like not used vet wrap, but old vet wrap. You can see that it's not sticking to itself. It's it looks a little stretched out compared to this newer vet wrap that actually it's not that new, but it's very well taken care of. It was in the plastic wrapping still compared to this one on the right and it's still sticking to itself. That'll come in handy, especially when you actually need to use it. If vet wrap doesn't stick to itself, it's kind of defeats the purpose of it. And then things to think about when you make these kits, um, expiration dates, or you can always, if you're a super organized person like me, I love inventory lists. So you can write out a sheet of paper with all the things you have in this uh, first aid kit, and then also put their expiration dates. So maybe yearly or every six months, you check your first aid kit to make sure that none of your supplies that you have has actually expired. Because um, obviously we don't want any exp expired ointments or um, liquid ointments that we need to replace or else they're just not going to be useful in an emergency time. And then if you do make a no if you do re take something from your first aid kit, a smart idea would be to take a to make a note um, to replace it. So if you take some you used your last vet wrap or you used three rolls of vet wrap for some other event or some other thing you need, you are you should probably make a note of it in your first aid kit, um, in your phone. So then when you look back in your first aid kit and you're like, oh, I need to, I need to replace this item in this first aid kit. Um, something that's super nice. Educate yourself would be my next um, point. So these, I'm gonna. So these ointments and liquids that you are welcome to put on your horse, if you're gonna buy them, I would definitely read the instructions and be educated in these different types of um, medicated ointments and even medication in general, such as butte, always conversing with your veterinarian. So I know coro this is Corona, um, ointment, so you can put those over, I know, small cuts and scratches to help help heal the wound. Iodine helps kill a lot of bacteria that might get inside big wounds that you can't really clean that well. So always read the instructions before you buy them and also know how to use them and what their um, purposes are. So then you know which ointment to use in, in an emergency situation. And then also storage. So just like this first aid kit here, they used a Rubbermaid. Some people want theirs bigger or smaller. Just find good storage for all your different sterile and non-sterile objects in your first aid kit. A lot of gauze are wrapped in Ziploc baggies. Underneath all of these things, there's actually a Tupper, Tupperware container holding more liquid ointment to keep from linking into your into the first aid kit. So the, those are smart ideas. I think this is also ulcer guard or even butte or banamine over here um, for other uses such as colic. So think about things, think about stuff that you would like in your first aid kit and maybe it could be specialized for your horse, especially if you know your horse is prone to colic more often have that banamine, have um, mineral oil ready, have a bucket, or if your horse is more prone to abscesses in their hooves, make sure you have diapers in that first aid kit, Epsom salt, and duct tape, of course, um, so then you, are, you have all that stuff ready in case you need it. And then I did put a video of how to wrap a leg wound for those of you that might need to figure that don't haven't need to do it before which is great for you um, I did it in slow-mo so we'll just talk about it and we can I can just word through it so here is actually a non-stick 
gauze pad. Um, I took it out from a sterile con um, wrapping that it actually came in. So, so some you have if you want to make sure some of these pads don't stick to your wound and actually hurt your horse even more and rip off that nice tissue if you leave it in there. So this is a very good non-stick gauze pad. And what you can use is they're kind of bigger, so you can either put the wound spray and put it on the wound. This horse was moving around. Or you can use Corona and you can either put it on your horse or onto the pad or the gauze pad. And I was just putting saying that you can also use a glove if you don't want to get your hands gross with all the ointment stuff. Lastly, you also need this gauze wrapping. And then I folded it assuming that this is a smaller wound. And then if you notice, you can see the dog in the background, but I did tie up the horse's tail so it doesn't get in the way while you are wrapping a back leg. I'm also, if you notice, not kneeling down, but I am crouched down. So in case that horse really does not like me touching on that wound and doesn't want me near it, I can get up and move away as quick as possible being in such a vulnerable position. Um, here is the gauze wrapping that you would like, that you would want to put on. So it took me a while, but you would want to, if you see how I'm putting this on, this gauze pad, you want to start from the inside towards the front of the cannon bone and then wrap behind. Um, that actually helps with the tendons if you um, wrap it that certain way. I did have some difficulties starting off. And then hopefully I can, yep. So if you notice how I am pulling, you don't want to pull too tight around the horse's leg or else that would actually be negative in there or like hurt their circulation system if you are pulling too hard with that gauze pad. They say you should only pull about one and a half, one to one and a half of the length of that actual gauze that you are wrapping. So I'm making sure I pull out some extra gauze before wrapping it so then I can keep myself from pulling that too tight around the horse's wound. And you normally want to start in the middle and then work your way down. I did a little bit, you should, oh, sorry about that. You should definitely, Stop, I, I worked my way down, but I started going back up at this joint area, because you, oh, sorry about that, you guys. You don't want to have the horse, you don't want to restrict movement in those joints with the horse. Um, and then the other thing is, if your whole goal with wrapping this wound, if you start in the middle, work your way down and then work your way back up and then back to the middle if possible, depending um, on how much of your gauze you actually have left. And if you can tell, I'm actually trying to laying this very flat. The horse is moving a lot, um, but you want it, you don't want wrinkles of any sort to be laying on that horse's wound. I also had scissors available. Oh. And then you can either lay it flat against itself and it'll hold it, depending if your horse will let you put that pressure. And then here are the cotton wraps. So this is an extra form of protection for your horse, especially if this is a really bad injury, that you can wrap on the outside of this to keep any more dirt or bacteria or harm to come to that leg. So these especially come in different sizes. Your horse's front legs are shorter than your horse's back legs. You see that I've started with this cotton on the inside again, just how I rolled everything else out. And then I'm gonna wrap the horse's leg around, nice even pressure, not too tight, not too loose. And you wanna wrap it nice and evenly. This is a good example of a horse moving, so you just need to make sure your end goal is so that wrap ends on the outside of your horse's leg. That is your end goal. 
And then the next part, you can either use a bet wrap or some people like to use polo wraps. I like vet wrap because polo wraps tend to come loose. And vet wrap is very stiff, so I start on the inside. I'm gonna come around. Nice even pressure, just like the gauze pad, and nice and straight. I tried to keep the wrinkles. One thing to think about when you're wrapping a horse is like you want to leave an inch of this cotton pad revealing about an inch at the bottom, but then also the top. So you'll see me come around here and then I'll leave that room and then I'm leaving that extra cotton pad for flexion for the horse when they walk. And then I slowly make my way back up to the top of the horse or top of the leg over by the hock. And that's where his joint kind of ends from the hawk. So I tried to wrap myself around, leaving some excess. And then I tried to come back down. I was running out of vet wrap at that point, but I still made it. And then I also, you can cut this, it'll lay flat on itself. Um, some people like to tuck it into itself, but I see that it's very hard personally from experience. Um, and then that is how you can wrap a horse's leg this is me showing how you could also use a polo wrap. If you want, some people use it, some people don't. But if you do, also start from the inside and work your way around. And then that should be towards the end of the video. So really put some thought into your first aid kits, but then also for educating yourself, watching these videos, even trying it on your own horse if possible. So then wrapping like this would be easier. You can get the feel for how your polar wraps are gonna roll or how you can get that vet wrap to stay nice and straight without any wrinkles in it. If you guys do have any questions, um, you're free to email me at grace.kim.edu. Um, but that is the end of our webinar. If you guys